Will the Coalition and Shadow Cabinet appointments in this week's reshuffles really make any difference to UK politics, or is it simply just window dressing? <laughs> Is it just window dressing, <laughs> dropping Diane Abbott, uh, for instance? Um, Matthew Paris, you're the expert on the machinations of politics as yes, an outside it. observer now. What do you say? I can give you a very short answer. It's, it's simply just window dressing. <laughs> I have nothing more to say. It is just window dressing. Why did he it's want to window dress Diane Abbott out of his front bench? We're always sorry when a star falls from the firmament. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in <laughs> No, it, it, it's mostly an exercise in uh, encouraging people within the party to believe that there is a hope for them, that things may change, that things are moving up there in the, in the stratosphere. Look, so-and-so's got a job, maybe you'll get a job. There's an awful lot of that going on, but really a change in the identities of a small number of junior ministers or junior spokesmen makes absolutely no difference to the overall direction of politics. Diane Abbott. Well, I was a, a curtain, or a bit of a curtain, that was removed from a window. Um, what, what I would a say... A bit of a what? A, a, a bit of curtain. A, curtain. Wind, a bit of curtain. <laughs> no, I've, um, never, I've thought of you of many things. I've never thought of you <laughs> as a bit of curtain before. What I would say, because I've, I've never been on the front bench before, I've never been sacked before, I've never been involved in a reshuffle before, and what struck me is how reshuffles leave most people really unhappy. All the people that didn't get promoted, all the people that didn't get the right job. So you have to feel a little bit sorry for Ed, because most of the people in the reshuffle are unhappy. Does it make a difference? I, I don't... I think... You know, it's probably correct to say it doesn't. But what I would say is, I understand. <laughs> I understand that one of the reasons that I got chopped was because I came out publicly and said we shouldn't bomb Syria, um, and I did it. <laughs> I did it because Ed Miliband was wobbling at that point, and it, they brought us back early because they wanted to bomb Damascus that weekend. I believe that would have dragged us into a civil war in Syria where there are no good guys. Syrians would have died. And if I got, put, got the push because I refused to vote for bombing Syria, well, I tell you, I would do the same thing over and over again. But they didn't have... They... <laughs> But, but Labour's motion didn't ask for permission to bomb Syria. No, but... It, so it, why, to, why I mean, no, you weren't that, asked to vote well, you, for You know how it works. What would have happened was we, we could have put forward a motion, it would have fallen, and then the leadership of my party would say, oh, well, we have to vote with the government now. That, that route was blocked off for the leadership, and then the Tory motion fell. All right. Jocelyn's. Which, by the way, also didn't give permission for, for bombing Syria. Jo I, think. Jo I, I mean, does it make any difference? Window dressing. I, I don't think it, it necessarily will be earth shattering, but clearly, every so often, party leaders do have to, in terms of the management of, uh, of what they're trying to do, in the same way that any organisation does, has to consider whether they have the right people in the right jobs doing, uh, you know, doing well. Now, in politics isn't your ideal kind of, you know, textbook management in terms of doing human resources. You know, there's not enough. Uh, continuing uh, personal development or proper appraisal systems where people can be uh, helped to work out what they could do better. It's a little bit chuck people in at the deep end and see if they sink or swim. Was, was, um, was, was putting Norman Baker in the Home Office, which was Liberal Democrats' decision, a man who believes the security forces covered up the murder of David Kelly, the weapons inspector. Was that just throwing Norman Baker in the deep end? I mean, well, what was all that I think about? Norman Baker's been a fantastic minister over the past uh, three years. But he believes the security minister. services, which he's now he, in part of managing, was responsible for cover-up about the murder of a, a senior government... Well, Official. I mean, say, say what you like about Norman Baker, you certainly can't say he's not prepared to, to challenge received wisdom. And now sometimes that leads to a huge amount of controversy. Uh, but on a, on a whole range of other issues, Norman Baker has been, you know, standing up. He was uh, putting in freedom of information requests, which were part of the way the whole MP's expenses scandal was uh, uncovered in the first place. I think Norman's done a wonderful job as a minister. He will do an excellent job in the Home Office. He is a very strong supporter of civil liberties. And, you know, if you have me back on this programme in a year's time, we'll be able to discuss how good a minister he's been in that role in the past year. And is it but, true Theresa May is very, very unhappy? Well, you know, I, I, I don't know the, the specifics of that, but, you know, it's not the job what, of the what, Liberal what, Democrats what, what, in what, government sorry, to make Theresa what May the, happy. What would the specifics be? I, I, I haven't had a conversation with Theresa to ask her whether she's happy, but and, as and, I say, sorry, it's not our it's, job to make her happy. But it's not the Liberal Democrats' job in a coalition to keep the Tories happy. 
No, it's our job to make sure we get as many Liberal Democrat policies in the, in the government enacted using the votes that people gave for, to us at the last general election. And putting someone with strong civil liberties credentials into the Home Office, I think, is a pretty good way of achieving that. Because you don't think those credentials are there at the moment? Well, I certainly think that it's, uh, it's useful to strengthen them at every opportunity. I'm a big fan of civil liberties, and I think it's important right. that we have that well represented in the Home Office. You sit up there in the, in the middle. Yeah. Um, Joe Swinson was saying that a change of this nature should be done on ability and it should be a meritocratic decision, but it strikes me from some of uh, Ed, Mil Ed, uh, Ed Miliband's decisions that rather than on meritocracy and ability, they're more on pleasing Len McCluskey and, and ticking yeah. that union box. Okay. Oh, I mean, I have to say... Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, go on. Go, uh, yeah, that's absurd. The headline promotion, the headline promotion of Ed's reshuffle was a wonderful guy called Tristan Hunt. Is he a left-winger? No, he's not. I mean, this idea that it was all about left versus right is absurd. All right. And the man in red there at the back? I used to work in the civil service, working for ministers for all of the three parties, and have experienced the impact of ministerial reshuffles. It causes a huge amount of disruption within government. Now, the Institute for Government and the Public Administration Select Committee have published reports on the impact of those reshuffles. Because of the regular reshuffles that have happened, particularly at the end of the Labour administration, Diane, the impacts that it had was it meant that none of your politicians were able to gain any expertise in their policy areas, and unfortunately, each of the different policy areas in their own way were captured by very wealthy vested interests. So you think people should stay in post longer, really? And not, not, I would like not be, to see more ministers around. and more... Adam Afriere, what do you say to that? Um, I think the Prime Minister's done an absolutely fantastic job. He's kept many... No, no, I think, I think so. <laughs> I, thought many... want, I thought you wanted to replace him. Oh, thought... <laughs> not back to that old one. <laughs> Is that... <laughs> you, well... get one, you get one newspaper story and everyone thinks you're running for leadership. It's a no. load of nonsense. Basically, I support the Prime Minister and I hope he's there for a thousand years. But anyway, as I was saying... <laughs> 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 But anyway, as I was saying, um, I think the Prime Minister's done a great job because he's, because he's kept stability in those positions. Some people have been in position now for three and a half, heading on towards four years, and I think that's a good thing. In terms of the reshuffles, there are always, you know, there are a lot of career politicians. Everyone wants to get up the slippery pole and um, nobody wants to come down. But a bit like um, share prices, you know, careers go up and careers go down. And what I would say is that actually, People returning to the back benches, they're going to be valued. They've got good experience and they'll be able to help. And people moving from the back benches to the front benches, they're going to add tremendous value. It's a win win situation. The Prime Minister is right. It's a vast improvement. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't mention Michael Gove. It's the first time you haven't tonight. Sarah Churchwell. Um, I quite agree with the, the gentleman in the back. I've never understood the, the concept of a. Of a re first of all, I don't know why it's a reshuffle because that seems redundant. Surely a shuffle is, is adequate to the concept. Um, but. <laughs> A I speak to Professor Rigby. Exactly. I, I, I deal with words. I deal with words. And that's exactly what I'm going to pick up on. The idea of a shuffle is the idea of disorder. It's a creation of randomness and disorder. That's what a shuffling of cards is. And I don't want a government that throws up the cards and sees how they land. I actually want a government that's playing a hand, that has a strategic idea of where it's trying to go. I don't understand why expertise, experience, and skills are not what is being uh, uh, emphasized here. I have never understood why the man in charge of the economy is somebody who got a degree in modern history. I don't understand that. I genuinely don't understand that. Now, certainly, certainly the evidence suggests he doesn't understand much about history either, so I'm not sure that we should be you know, giving him uh, any control over that. But, but the, the fact is, is, that, is that I would like to hear a conversation not about, I mean, of course, it's great that there are more women now in leadership roles. That's a nice outcome. That's a good thing. But I want to know if those women are actually good at the jobs in which they've been put. And that is, the, that is the matter that we need to hear about. And we never hear about what their skills are, what their experience is that makes them appropriate for the position that they have just been put in. Okay.